So the other day I stumbled on this tool called Bolt and it's really, really similar to sort of like the Repler agent and that allows you to create these fully fledged web apps and softwares. And right now it's free. So I thought I'd make a little video on it, just showing you guys how to use it as I really think it's a big contender to things like, as I said, the Repler agent, but then also things like Cursor, V0, even Claude. So yeah, I just wanted to make a little video going through making a little mini software on there and just trying it out with you guys really. If you haven't seen me before, my name's Rory Ridges and I'm an AI enthusiast and I'm passionate about helping business owners integrate AI into their business. So if that's something you might be interested in, then do subscribe to my channel and make sure you stick around for the video. So I haven't really got much of a plan for this video. What I'm basically gonna be doing is just asking ChatGPT to give me a bunch of software ideas for sort of different industries, ranging from the least complex to the most complex. I'm just gonna see what it gives me. And then we're gonna pick one of them and then take it over to Bolt and try it out and try and create it. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so as I've said, we're starting off in ChatGPT and I'm just giving it this really, really simple prompt. I've just said, can you give me an example of 10 simple SaaS ideas I can make for different industries and companies, order them in order from least complex to most complex. So really, really simple. Let's see what it comes out with. So we got appointment scheduling, invoice and billing generator, simple CRM, inventory management system, uh, task management system, HR onboarding tool, social media tool, time tracking software, customer feedback and survey platform, and automated lead scoring tools. So I quite like the idea of this task management system. It kind of doesn't seem too complex, but then also seems quite useful at the same time, which is just what we want. So what we're gonna to say to it is, so what I've just said to ChatGPT is write me out a prompt that I can give to an AI software generator for number five, including how the UI should look and all the features that it's gonna need. Okay, so you can see now it's just writing out this prompt. So we've got this little section on the UI design, the dashboard, the product page, the task details view, team collaboration features, notifications, and then we're moving on to the features. So standard user accounts and permissions, then we've got task assignments and deadlines, all of these. Okay, yeah, that looks good. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna highlight all of this, hit copy, and then we're gonna go over to bolt.new, which is the tool that we're gonna be using in this video to create these softwares. Okay, so this is what the bolt looks like. As you can see, really, really nice UI, looks really nice. And it's from a company called StackBlitz. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna paste that prompt in that we got from ChatGPT can see we've got all the features and just how we want the UI to look we're gonna hit send and it's gonna take a little minute to um, just sort of generate the first draft uh, what's interesting about this something that's different to the Repl agent is the Repl agent first sort of creates a plan and then it gives you a little checklist of features that you might want to include so it suggests some features like user authentication or in-app notifications things like that and then it'll let you tick these features if you want them in your project. But for this, it's just jumped straight into it. It's just started generating code. So yeah, let's see what it comes out with. So of course, the main difference with things like this and the Repl agent compared to things like Cursor, Claude, even like the ChatGPT01, is that these softwares install everything, like all the dependencies, and it will set up all the databases and the user authentication and things like that, which obviously is a limitation of Claude and ChatGPT and Cursor. So yeah, if you're not too familiar with setting up databases and installing dependencies and things like that, then I reckon your best bet is this Bolt tool or the Repl agent. And if you haven't seen the Repl agent before, I did make a video on that, so do go check that out. Okay, so it looks like it's generated the first draft. It's given us a little bit here of what it's done, the dashboard, the product page, task details. Okay, so it's just telling us to run the application, ensure all dependencies are installed by running npm install, so we're just do that quickly. And then it says start the deployment server with npm run dev, so we're just do that as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try open this in stack blitz, and I found this works. So as you can see, if you've used Replit before, this might look familiar to you. It does look very similar, it kind of works the same way. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait for this to boot up and then we're gonna view it for you here because this way we can open it in the web browser. Okay, so now it's loaded here. We're just gonna click open in new tab. See what happens. It's gonna ask us to connect the project. So we literally just hit connect project. Okay, so it's loaded and this actually looks really nice for a first draft. I mean, the UI is really nice, but obviously we gotta see if the functionality actually works. So before we do that, we're just gonna check out the different pages. So we've got the dashboard here the projects, okay, it doesn't look like there's anything in the projects, and then team, same thing, and then settings, 
same thing. So it looks like there's a problem with the projects, team and setting pages. But the dashboard works, which is good. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say this to the agent. We're just going to say, so I've literally just said to it, the dashboard is loading, but none of the other pages are. Okay, so now it's finished. It says it's done. You can see it's updated the app.tsx to include the routes for teams and settings pages. It's done a couple other things, which is good. And you can see now it's actually showing up in the preview, which is good. So we're just going to check it out and see if it works. You can see dashboard still working fine. So let's try and use the other pages. Project one. Let's have a look. Okay. That, that looks like it's all there. Let's try team. So it's saying this is team page, you can add team management functionality here. Okay, so maybe we need to come back and do that. And then settings. This is the setting page, you can add user and application settings here. So we also just got this pop up saying potential problem detected. So if we just click on this, you can see we get this long thing here. And to be honest, I don't know what this means. <laughs> so you can see down here, we get the option to either fix a problem or clear it. So we're just going to try and fix a problem just in case and just sort of see how it reacts as well. It's quite cool that it's managed to detect this problem without, you know, me running into it first. So yeah, let's see how it reacts. Also, my mouse has just decided to die. So apologize if you hear me tapping the mouse pad. Okay, so you can see it said to us, the warning you're seeing is related to the React Beautiful D&D library, which is used as a depreciated feature with memo components. So you can see it's kind of recognized the problem and then you can see this is what it's done to try and rectify it and now it's done these changes it's added a key prop to each droppable component this ensures that the react can properly track and update these components move the droppable and draggable components inside the rendering logic for both board and list views this helps react better to manage the components and life cycle okay cool so it looks like it's sort of figured out this problem on its own and it's managed to rectify it which is really cool so you can see, same as before, when we click on project one though now, we get another issue, which is weird. So looks like we can just do that again. Okay, so it looks like it's kind of given us a similar problem. So what we're gonna do for now is we're just gonna ignore that. And we're gonna come back to the dashboard and we're gonna just come back and we're gonna test this out. So we're gonna see if we can create a new project and see what happens. So you can see we've got project A, project B, project C here upcoming deadlines obviously these are all just examples so if we hit create new project let's see what happens okay so it looks like nothing's happens when we click create new project so we're just going to say that to bolt i'm going to say i try to click new project but nothing happened now what i think it's done with this is First of all, from my original prompt, pretty much all it did was create the UI. It didn't actually add any functionality to it. As you can probably already tell, it's just done the dashboard, the project pages, things like that. And they're just like standard UIs. They don't actually do anything. So I guess what we have to do now is come back in after and add the functionality, which is different to things like the Repl agent. That just adds the functionality in automatically and maybe it's just like a one-time thing maybe my prompt was just slightly off and it didn't really understand or, or maybe that is just a feature of bolt that it does it that way it creates the ui first and then adds the functionality after i'm not too sure okay so you can see this is what it said so it's added some functionality here it said i added a use state hook to manage the product state implements the handle create new project function that creates a new project and adds it to the project's array update the create new project button to call the handle create new project function when clicked it's basically it made the button do something essentially that's what it's saying to me so we're going to try it out see what happens okay actually i was wrong it was creating the projects um i just didn't know they were appearing at the bottom here and i didn't know that maybe because it's this preview view maybe if it was open in my actual browser i'd be able to tell a bit more obviously so you can see, yeah, if we click create new project, it's kind of hard to tell it's actually done anything. But if we scroll down here, you can see new project four. And then if we click on it, it takes us to the project four page, which looks like there's already some things to do in here. So I guess those are just sort of example things. Let's go into one of the other projects and see what it does. So let's try project A. Yeah, okay, you can see it's the exact same to-do list as the other ones. So, so then when you click on these to-dos, this is pretty cool. 
you can see you can change all of these things the title the description the assignee the deadline the priority and you can also add a comment so that's nice but i think when we create new projects we want that to be blank rather than having these example ones in there so we're just going to say that to bolt we're going to say so what i've said to it essentially is when i create a new project i want it so that there's nothing in there to do the in progress or the completed section i want it so it's blank and then it gives me the option to add my own tasks okay so you can see it's updating the ui here sort of as it's going okay so it looks like it said it's finished what it was doing so we're going to try one more time create new project new project four and we can come in here and let's try and add a task now so yeah title description the assignee deadline priority i'm just going to fill these in quick and then just do it as an example okay so i've just said for the title website development the description is create a website for a recruitment agency the assignee here is Robert Smith, the deadline 10th of October, and the priority is high. So let's see what happens when we add task. Yeah, okay, perfect. So let's put it in th into the to-do. Now we've got to figure out how we want to put it from the to-do into the in-progress or the completed section. So, okay, as I'm trying to do this, it's just come up saying that there's 93 problems it's detected. So we probably can't ignore that. Just had a little look at them. And it said about the drops again and the cannot find a droppable entry with the ID to do, and then 46 things on pretty much the same thing. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna hit fix problems and let Bolt figure this all out for us. I think what it was trying to do was have it so that we could drag and drop the tasks from to do, then into progress and into completed. So I think that's what it's working on, trying to rectify now. So I, as you can see, it says that it's worked. It's removed a couple things, ensure the dropout error is always rendered. Okay, so we're just gonna try and drag and drop some of these tasks now. We're just gonna go into project A. Okay, there's nothing in here, so <laughs> we're just gonna add a task. So I've just done the exact same task as before. Let's hit add task and see if we can drag and drop. Now, as you can see, as I'm holding down, it just fills up with problems there. So there's obviously still a problem with this. I'm not too sure what it is, I'm not too sure why I can't figure it out, but we're just gonna hit fix problems one more time. Okay, so it looks like it's tried to figure it out again this time, and then I also just got a pop-up saying 34,000 of the 150,000 daily tokens are remaining, so unless upgrade, I'm gonna have to try and get this done pretty soon. But on this video, I wanna show you the free plan of this, so I'm not gonna upgrade just to do this project. We're gonna try and get it done with the 34,000 tokens we have left. So what we're gonna do is for this time, we're gonna open it in stack bits again, and then we're gonna open it in our browser and see if it works properly. Okay, so now it's loaded in the browser. So we're gonna try and do this drag and drop feature one more time. If we go into this project, select add task. Okay, so we've just done the exact same task again. Let's hit add task. And yeah, as you can see, it's still not letting us drag and drop. Not too sure why it's doing that. It does let us change between the uh, views here, columns or rows, which is pretty nice. Yeah, still doesn't let us drag and drop. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna, instead of having the drag and drop, we're just gonna have a little drop down and select if it's to do in progress or completed. I think that's gonna be much, much simpler. So we can just say that to it, we can say, so I've just said to it, instead of having it drag and drop, just put a drop down menu under the task with to do in progress or completed. And now what's interesting about this is compared to the Replit agent, I know I keep comparing it to the Replit agent, but I think it's a pretty good comparison because they're quite similar things. Um, but the difference between this and the Repl agent is one of the first things the Repl agent seems to do is set up user authentication and set up the databases so you can store user data. But this hasn't even done that yet. I assume if you prompt it to do it, it will do that. But yeah, it's just something that I noticed that the Repl agent seems to do it straight away, which is nice. But uh, Bolt, they don't seem to do that. However, something else I've seen that I think Bolt is better at is that I think it's definitely quicker. And also I think the UIs that it generates off the bat are much nicer now that might have been the prompt from chat gpt and might have prompted it to do nice uis like this but it seems with the rep agent whatever prompt i give it about the ui so yeah i think bolt just does a better job at creating these initial uis okay so it looks like it's done it it said it's removed the drag and drop and now added it as just a drop down menu so we're going to add a task and see if it has done it Okay, here you can see I'm just writing out the task now and there's a status bar here. So to do in progress or completed. So we're just gonna try to do. 
and yeah, you can see it puts in the to-do section and it's made the drop-down menu here. I was worried we're gonna have to click back on the task and edit it to be able to access the drop-down menu, but it's done it right here. So it looks like if we change it, yeah, it hasn't worked. Okay, so I'm not too sure where that's gone, but it hasn't gone to the progress section, which is weird. So we're just gonna say that to the bolt and it looks like this might be our last prob that we're gonna say to it. So I hope it gets it right this time. So I've just said to it, when I changed the task from to do to in progress with the drop down menu, it just disappeared. It didn't actually change into in progress. Yeah, you can see now I've used all of my remaining tokens. So if this doesn't work, then we won't be able to finish this until tomorrow, but hopefully it does. So we're just gonna try to add a task again. So you can see the status is to do, Hit add tasks. And then we change it to in progress and yeah you can see again it's gone so obviously it's not working now but we're out of credits which is annoying but you can see if you subscribe to pro you get 66 more times usage that's obviously going to be more than enough more than you'd need to be able to create a fully fledged software and you also have to remember guys if you watch my replica agent where i did build out a full software with this i am on the pro plan for that so i get way more usage with it and yeah so in the end, this is what it's come out with. I mean, I've only been using it for sort of, as I said, 10 minutes. You can see the UI is really, really nice. I really like the UIs. Uh, it's created the sidebar perfectly, which the Repl agent had trouble with before for some reason. I don't know why. We can create these new projects. That works perfectly. The settings, we didn't get to that. The team, we didn't get to that either. This is definitely a work in progress, and this is something that I could... 100% build on this if I choose that I don't want to pay for the pro plan I could just come back tomorrow and keep working on this and I might keep working on this software we'll see but for this video I just wanted to show you what was possible with the free version I think we've made a really really solid start to a potentially really good SaaS so my honest opinion on Bolt is I think that's a really really good software I think in ways it's better than the Repl agent and in other ways the Repl agent is better than it for instance I think Bolt generates things much quicker I think the UIs off the bat are much nicer I think it's much more user friendly as well. Not that the Repl agent is too complicated to work out, but I think Bolt is just much nicer to use. But then again, like I said before, the Repl agent does set up the user authentication and the databases right at the start, which Bolt doesn't seem to do. And then obviously if you compare Bolt to things like Cursor and Claude, it's much more beginner friendly, I think, as it installs all the dependencies and it lets you preview it. So yeah, that's my honest opinion. I think that Bolt has the potential to be really, really good. At the moment, I'm using the Repl agent just because that's what I'm used to. But I think if I had to start again, I was completely new to this. I'd probably buy the subscription for Bolt because I feel like it's nicer to use. The UIs are better and it's quicker, as I said before. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you were looking to work with me so I can help to integrate AI into your business, then I've left a link to my website in the description and you can come book in a call with me or I've left my email down below and you can just email me directly with any questions that you have.